control is a powerful thing. It gives power to some wealth to others. And for some of us, the need to control a situation or a person can lead to violence, rage, and sometimes even murder. Control can be constructive in moments, but more times it can be dangerous, not only to person who wants the control, but the people around them as well. Today's show is one of those stories, a story filled with lies, a need to control, and a brutal murder. Creative, young, and deadly, the Ezra McCandless story. To go forward, we need to go back a bit on the night of March 22nd, 2018. A young woman appeared out of nowhere on the doorstep of a dairy farmer. She was shoeless, crying, and covered in blood and mud and a number of bruises. Her clothing slashed and cut up as if someone had attacked her or sexually assaulted her. The farmer called 911, and in the background, the young woman could be heard sobbing and speaking, but her words couldn't be made out when the police came. The young woman told them her name was Ezra McCandless. She told them she had been attacked by her ex-boyfriend, Alex Woodworth, that he had been cut her clothing, tried to force himself on her, and carved the word boy into her forearm, that she'd fought him trying to save her life, and in the process had killed him by accident. Following her footprints in the mud, the police found the brutal scene and Alex's dead body. The coroner's report would later say the cause of death was 16 stab wounds. But who was Ezra? Was her story even true? She had been a victim, or was she a killer? Born as Monica to an underage mother, she would eventually change her name to Ezra, a name she said she felt she had a connection to something that wasn't too feminine yet wasn't too masculine either. Ezra would wear makeup and a dress as a girl at times. She would dress in male clothing and shed her girlish behavior. She later said she took the last name of McCandless as a tribute to Christopher McCandless who, on a side note, was a young hiker who left behind his life and headed for Alaska to live in nature. His life and death were the subject of the film and book Into the Wild. At the age of 19, Ezra met Jason Mingell, an Army Reserve medic who was 33 at the time of their meeting. Despite the age gap, the two formed a relationship and connected. Ezra was everything Jason seemed to find fascinating. She was young, artistic, and full of life. Many who knew her said after she dropped out of college, she had taken a shine to coffee shops where other young artists and writers would hang out. She loved drawing and showed a promise at even drawing all over her car with her artwork. Jason and Ezra lived together and even had considered marriage, calling each other wife and husband. But that would all change when the couple befriended 23-year-old Alex Woodworth. He was a barista at the coffee shop Ezra would spend time at and Alex dreamed of one day becoming a philosophy professor. He was kind, sweet, intelligent, and everyone seemed to love him. When Ezra and Alex met, he wanted to help her, 
She was going through an emotional time and Alex wanted to help. Something Jason had trusted. However, Ezra and Alex's relationship soon took a turn and the two began a secret sexual affair. Something Jason would eventually find out and confront Alex about. After the affair had been found out, Ezra broke up with both men. But it wouldn't be long before Ezra would tell Jason a friend of his had sexually assaulted her. On March 1, 2018, Ezra was interviewed by local authorities, telling the story of what had taken place, saying he had told her to be quiet, that she was tipsy and had blacked out and believed this was when he had taken advantage of her. Upon further investigation, police discovered suggestive text messages exchanged between Ezra and Jason's friend she had accused of sexual assault. When Alex would be questioned by police, he told them he knew Ezra and that she had confessed to him that she had never been assaulted, that the sex had been consensual, but she regretted it. The sexual assault case was ultimately dropped in part because of Alex's testimony, something that Ezra was greatly upset about, so upset that she felt the town of Eau Claire uh, was so upset that she left the town of Eau Claire and moved back in with her parents. But her lies didn't stop. In fact, it only seemed to add fuel on the fire. Ezra was desperate to win Jason back, telling tales of manipulative men trying to steal her away from him. A direct quote from Ezra said, They tried to take me away from you, Jason. It's not me, it's them. But after eight months together, lies and constant stories, Jason had simply had enough, telling her he could no longer trust her and was tired of being toyed with, something that set Ezra over the edge. Many, many said that she was deeply troubled and she wanted some sort of control back in her life. That control being Jason back in her life. On the day of March 22, 2018, Ezra told Jason that she had come back to town and that she would be showing some of her writing to Alex, that she was working on becoming herself again and regaining control of her life once more. But many believe she had another motive and would do whatever it took to have Jason back in her life again. During the early morning hours, Ezra can be seen on the camera inside the coffee shop looking agitated before leaving for Alex's home.